Okay, hi Blake. Hey Dale, how you doing? Okay, I'm doing great. I was actually Good. looking at a different uh, email account, so my my, okay. my fault. Well, yeah. that's show business, buddy. It's uh, great to have you with with us today, Blake, because I haven't talked to you in a while, and uh, I know that um, you've been kind of a big bear on U.S. dollar yen for a while, and you know we have that lower high and slash crest to 116 and there's been a little uh, at least turn of the worm in equities with a lot of damage done having flash crashes so interested in knowing where your head's at on a lot of these things especially going into next week uh, will she or won't she or does her only her hairdresser know for sure Blake <laughs> well well first of all Dale I, I didn't know we were live so uh, thanks for having me back it's really it's really nice to uh, be back um, did you want me to show a chart? Since my, my video, yeah. the, the camera in this this uh, this yeah sure here, yeah go, go ahead to a screen here and then we could uh, a picture speaks yeah. a thousand words, buddy. So yeah, uh, let's see. I haven't done this in a while, so let me go ahead and uh, go. It's over. upper on the upper left hand side of the hangout, and it says share screen. Got it. And then it'll show. Then you click. Can you can you see me? All right, got you. Okay, great. Um, let me see that. Okay. Uh, well, well. For, first of all, the dollar yen. You know, the the move in the dollar yen after that. After and let me get over to it really quick. The, yeah, that the flash in, crash. Yeah, that that that. You know, when we were down a thousand points, uh, you know, there was a. I was doing a lot of uh, taking a lot of action at that at that point in time, and I, uh, I had I had friends that had puts that were calling me there I'm like I'm like cover everything you know we, yeah. when the Dow was down like a thousand points that morning and um, yeah. you know interestingly enough uh, it was fun for me it was long the VIX oh well there you go then you you so, made it you crushed it then crushed it yeah it was an ETF related but uh, yeah so uh, okay that was uh, you know really an amazing move I mean the VIX from 13 to 50 in a week so it was, uh, it's hard for me to believe it's a one-off, and that was you it. Know, you know, and one of the things that, and, and Dale, I know you you know this from being around for so long, and and it's something that I've I've always re remembered in my you know throughout the, my years in, in in the markets. When you see this type of volatility and the type of volatility that we're seeing right now, when you're seeing you know we're we're, we're getting three percent, four percent moves intraday, just like what Wednesday. I mean, the yeah. Dow was up 200, 250 points intraday. Uh, on the Dow futures, we were down like 200 at intraday, and then, I mean that that three to four percent whipping around intraday, and we're doing it consistently, and those are usually marks of some sort of turning point in the market, and and you you know a lot of people say well well you know we've already come off our highs quite a bit so maybe it's a turning point and we're moving back up now I think when you see these types of this type of volatility it usually is marking a bigger turn like not I'm not talking over the course of weeks. I'm talking the course of months. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that when you say I don't think this is a one-off, I, I would tend to agree with you. Um, I've been selling into strength as far as risk goes, and I think um, as far as the dollar yen goes, uh, it, it, it did make a, a real deep move. And matter of fact, a lot of these currency pairs, um, uh, especially the yen-related pairs, they they uh, they finished up some. Some like uh, like the weekly head and shoulder pattern got finished up because of this move in in the yeah, New the yen down to almost eighty one was a target eighty four eighty one yeah they it, did it in a day they did and and so if you weren't quick enough that day then you know to to buy them early in the morning in the North American session you, you missed out on a lot and and some of these some of these pairs were only down there for uh, a couple of minutes so these spikes that you see here are all real. Um, and and a lot of people say, well, my broker, you know, removed that. And I'm like, you know, if you look at different platforms, we were down there for a minute or two. So, and I was trying to explain to our traders yesterday, if you have a broker that have removed some of these spikes, um, you know, you get a data scrub. And and I've been in the data business for for years with Wise Trade, and I and I know how um, data operates. And so yeah. you you have algorithms that will look at like if um, if uh, if a currency pair spikes up. Or down more than ten times the ATR in a in a thirty second period, send a flag, and so that flag you get flagged, and then you have some engineer that doesn't trade that's looking at prices and say, oh, that's erroneous. I'm going to go ahead and erase it. And so a lot of brokers actually erase these these wicks, but 
we were there. I mean, I watched it. You watched yeah, it. Yeah, they were real. And they're, they're real. I mean, they, and, couldn't, they couldn't open the VIX for 20 minutes that day. But for some reason, in case you ever do trade the ETFs, like TVIX, that's what I trade, it was trading even though the VIX wasn't open. So uh, I think the ETFs uh, did a pretty good job. I think they did a better job than individual stocks, which kind of had those ghost uh, you Big know, gaps, down yeah. there for a second. Yeah. So just, uh, it's interesting that, Mar you know, they were worried about liquidity in the bond market. Uh, I, I think we had a liquidity crisis in equities. Yeah, we, we did, and 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 a lot of that, you know, could be created from, uh, you know, um, I, I guess, uh, you know, maybe you could you can blame it on some of the some of the, uh, you know, the uh, what do you uh, call them? I'm so glad you're putting up that trend line because you know what, Blake, I still think I'm going to have a chance to short the uh, S and P's above two thousand. I don't know what the catalyst will be. You know, a lot of people are looking for us just to wash out from here. It's it's more like intuition, and what I'm seeing in VIX is that we got to clean out those 1990 bears. And look, your line comes in 2040 or so. What yeah, a great and, shorting opportunity! I'm going to do it if we get up there. What do you think? Yeah, if we can get up there, I, I don't think that's a bad place, especially from a risk reward standpoint. And do you, you know, a lot of times, the, do oh, you think ahead. if the Fed doesn't move, that'll happen because it'll be a relief rally? Or do you think if the Fed does move, it'll happen because that'll show that the Fed has confidence despite what's happening in emerging markets, et cetera? Yeah. Well, well first of all, I don't. I, I think I, I, I would be in the minority to believe that the Fed is actually going to raise rates this next week. Um, it, it, you know, m most, most people are, are looking at a 30 to 35 percent chance that the Fed raises rates, and that, that the number's moving. You know, today it's probably shifted a little lower because of the – um, you know the um, the, the consumer confidence, consumer confidence, yeah, that just yeah. came out. So, uh, you know, I, I personally think that the the market really doesn't believe the Fed's going to pull the trigger yet. Um, I, I personally believe that the Fed the Fed's going to, and and uh, and for for a multitude of reasons. But um, regardless, uh, if the Fed doesn't, would that put us that far up? Would we rally a hundred S and P points? I don't know. That I think that's kind of lofty. I, I think if we even challenge 2,000, um, that would be a pretty good target going into next week if we if if the Fed doesn't okay. move. But but again, you know, I, I'm thinking that might be a little lofty, and that's just that's that's just me personally. And you know, like yeah. you, I, I trust my gut a lot. And you know, after I breached the age of 40, uh, my gut's gotten bigger, so I tend to trust it a little bit more. <laughs> so you know, as you, you know how it goes. So um, now. A, a couple other things that I I'm, I'm personally doing, like uh, y yesterday and t yesterday actually afternoon, I picked up the dollar Canadian. Um, the dollar Canadian, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of talk today about Goldman twenty dollar oil call, and uh, we we all should remember that Go Goldman was also calling for two hundred when we were at one hundred and fifty. So, um, you know, take it all with a grain of salt, but but. The the dollar Canadian has been it's been really wound up and right up against uh, the yeah. hundred and sixty lot of, lot of compression though. It is and you know on a monthly basis I'm still looking for it to trade up north of one fifty and and the flag pattern that we've been playing into is still and in going to one forty but it's played out just as I have expected and we all that the, anybody that listens to the webinars that I do daily um, on, on my on my daily broadcast rather you know we were looking for a breakout, 144. We hit 133.50 to hit the 161% extension. Pull back to the breakout point, the monthly breakout point at 131. We did. We actually came back to 131 and change, and then eventually make our way to 140 first, which will be the flag pattern. It'll be like 142. So if you look at wow. this, uh, like the, you look at this consolidation, that we're in the apex of this wedge, and um, wow. we could very easily start breaking out here and I picked some up yesterday I picked up some dollar Swiss yesterday at 9720 because uh, one of the one of the things that I I do believe is that the um, the one of the better trades out there is going to be the dollar Swiss and when you have the Swiss National Bank at you know a, a negative interest rate at three-quarter basis point and then you get the Fed going the other direction I think we have the the brewing and the genetic makeup to actually really move up towards 110 to 120 in the next six months. Uh, that would obviously be a very explosive move um, and some big multi-decade trend lines that would be taken out 
uh, in order to do that. But I think that's all um, it's all brewing right now. And those are those are like things that I've been picking up because I, I actually want to go into the FOMC meeting next week, long the dollar a little bit, not not okay. aggressively. Just I want to have my toe dipped in the water because if the Fed does raise rates, I think there there's more than a fifty percent chance that they do. Uh, I think if they do raise rates, you're going to get a knee-jerk dollar reaction higher. Now there's a lot of people that seem to believe, and uh, Kit Jukes from uh, uh, SockGen this morning was just you know talking about how he expects the dollar to go down following you know the. The, the Fed raising rates, and a lot of people say that the dollar tends to go down when you know uh, in, in cycles when the Fed's starting to raise rates. But the one thing that I think a lot of economists have really missed, and and, may, and we'll find out. I don't know if they've missed it or not. And I, I mean, no one knows until it happens. But one of the things that I think the oversights that they have is this is not. This is not a normal market. This isn't our normal monetary. I mean, this is normal conditions for the time being. But according to the Fed, we're still in emergency crisis uh, mode as far as monetary policy goes. So as we normalize, you know, where, what is normal? I don't. Uh, normal is probably not the same normal that we were ten years ago. But I think right. that normal is not there's where we're new, at right now. There's a new normal. There, there is a new normal, and wherever that normal is, I'm not, I'm not too sure. But one no. thing I will state is that if the Fed raises rates, I wouldn't be so sure that the dollar is going to come down because just because it's done it in some of the previous other cycles. Because remember, we have been at ZERP, basically ZERP for for yeah, seven years. Never. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and this is not We were young. We were we were young. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the, the the way the way I'm 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 looking at this is um, I I don't know if I'd necessarily fade the dollar. You're I would think you get a knee jerk reaction if the Fed raises rates, but I think there's going to be a lot of people trying to sell the dollar following the Fed raising yeah, rates. They, all, and they I think, think it's all baked in. I think they think it's baked in, and I think that yeah. that that they they think oh you know. Uh, the the Fed going one direction, other central banks going the other direction. That's already baked in, is it though? And are we going to get back to normal? And if we're going to get back to normal, aren't we years ahead of everyone else? So even if there's a a, a slight bump in the dollar, uh, I don't know if I'd be t you know too aggressive in stepping in front of it. I, I personally am going to be looking to buy the dollar in any dips that come. And and let's let's. Talk about the Fed not raising rates because I'm going to try to be long a little bit of dollars going into next week. I'm hoping that, like, I can maintain my dollar Canadian and my dollar Swiss position. I just shorted the euro at, in the 90, 92, uh, 90, uh, 112, 92, just, just about 15 minutes ago. I hope I can have these little nibbles, uh, and I'm short the cable too, just a little bit, but I hope I can have these little dollar positions going into the FOMC, because even if the Fed doesn't raise rates, we're one step closer to raising rates. We're, we are one meeting closer to raising rates. So any dip that you see in the dollar is probably going to be bought too. You can see it really in like the Swissy. The Swissy won't back off. The Euro... Yeah. Um, and Canada didn't break off during that uh, historic no. bear market rally in crude. No, of course. And, you know, and, the, then, leaving, yeah. and then leaving uh, rates uh, unchanged. Nothing could knock it down. Exactly, and a lot of people, a lot of people look at the euro and they go, "Well, you know, what about that spike to 117?" It's like, well, that was, you know, if, if there was a carry trade out there, and you were selling euros and buying ruble, right? Which, which, by the way, I know some asset managers that were doing that, just for, for the record. Um, you know, if you were selling euros to buy pesos, if you were selling euros to buy lira, well, yeah, you got a little bit of that carry trade unwind, but you have to also ask yourself that we're not in an environment where carry trades are super popular. When everybody's near ZERP, now yeah. there are the there are the, some central banks that are that that do have that benefit, and some currencies that yield it, like the euro peso, the euro ruble, the euro uh, renminbi. You know those those squeezes are already they they were one and done and and so you had bad positioning in the euro dollar short as it was right. then you got a little bit of squeeze then you got speculators jumping on top of that running with that 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 uh, theory or the you know the the story oh yeah you know everybody short the euro so we're going to squeeze it and there's a carry trade component to it and blah 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 everybody jumped on that trade and and that was very quick 
And yeah, I believe it, all those. It was, it was really to take out the 114 bears, wasn't it? It, it was. And I, and I think that that move is done. So if you're out there thinking, oh, the equity markets are going to rally, uh, or excuse me, they're going to sell off. So I'm buying the euro because it worked back here because the carry trade liquidation. That's a, that's a story that was a very small story. And yeah. I think it's already played out. I think if we, if the markets do come down, and let's say you're right, Dale, and it's not a one-off, and the and and the markets, I, I actually think the markets are going to pull back a little further. I think we're probably going to see closer to, you know, sixteen, seventeen hundred in the S and P. But yeah, if, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I I think some of us that have been around the block a few times believe that. And and if the S and P does come off a little bit further, which is only going to give us an opportunity to buy it, so that's you know I'm I'm looking at it as more as an opportunity on both sides. But if that happens, I don't know if I would expect euro strength. I would actually expect the dollar to start pick up picking up steam as more of a risk aversion asset. You know, you have to really convince the market. That, you know, you have to convince the market that the market's actually going down, and we're seeing it now. You know, we we, we get 200 point rallies in the Dow, and the, you get a, an immediate rug pull right after. So they're all bear market rallies that you're seeing. I know it, it it's masking an uptrend in the stock market, but that, that's that's price action of a of a of of a bear market. A bear market. I, exactly. And so when when the rest of the market goes, oh crap, you know, maybe we're not gonna see S P twenty two hundred and maybe this is really the, the, the time where we, we start to see a move down in, in the S P and really start to see a correction. Uh, here, let me get rid of this line here. We we see a correction you know, down towards 16, 1700 and revisit maybe the breakout point and maybe have a 20, 20, 25 correction from the highs, yeah. then if you start getting that, that mindset, traders are going to look for safety and, you know, they're not going to look for safety in the euro. They're going to look for safety in the dollar. They're going to look in the yen. They'll probably look in the, maybe somewhat in the Swiss franc, regardless of uh, the, the, the Swiss franc holding a, a, a negative carry. But, you know, I uh, I would be very skeptical about being too aggressively short the dollar, um, uh, and especially with so much so uncertainty the, over the next so week. So the bond, the yields have been back and uh, coming back up. Uh, if we get that uh, break and there's a flight to safety, then most likely bonds make another move to the upside. They could. Uh, it's it's hard to say how bonds are going to react. I mean, you know, if if the if, if 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 the Fed's raising rates, I mean, you know, bonds might bonds might sell off too. It, it's it's it, and 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 rates. It's a tough call. It is a tough call. I, I wouldn't want to be a bond trader here over the course of the next couple of weeks because I can I can argue both sides of the uh, of the of of the fence. And when I can argue both sides, I usually you know in currencies when I can argue. You know, I could be long the euro, I could be short the euro. I usually just leave it alone. Or you know, if I can, you know, I can ar I can make those arguments. But, um, but anyway, that's that's what I'm looking at in regards to the dollar. And uh, I have one more trade that I'm really excited about. That I, but I happen to be in the money. I've been I've been trading it long for the last couple of weeks. If you want to hear about it. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, one of the other trades that I've um, been watching very carefully is this Aussie New Zealand. Um, the, the Aussie New Zealand has been in a, um, a weekly. Now, that spike is from that crazy day that we had in the market. So kind of bypassing that from, um, you know, a, 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 a um, bypassing it as far as what I'm, you know, trying to measure and right. from a chart pattern standpoint. But yeah. we have this flag pattern that we've been developing for yeah. really the last couple of months. But what it's butted up against is this uh, downsloping trend line. And and you can see it right here. And I'm, I, I, I'll tell you, Dale, I've been long, I've been picking it up and I bought it three different times on, based on this chart pattern. I bought it here, down, down here. Um, I, I was actually long, I blogged about it and I was long here and I sold it. We hit that trend line, you know, as it pulled back, I bought it. And by the time I thought it was going to rip through this trend line and it didn't, and it came down by the time I got out, I, I think I actually even lost a little bit of money by the time I've got all my entries and I exited, I lost a little money the first time around. I bought it again as it dipped down here. I thought, okay, we're developing this flag because you can see the, the, the highs right. were consistent. I bought it here. By the time I got out, you can see this wick. By the time I got out, I ended up making like 30 pips. I had a 200 pip gain, and I, it all got away from me, almost. 
So here we are again. Resilient, holding up uh, quite well. Uh, uh, maybe we've corrected what 23 percent of that advance. Uh, that's an indication of a lot of relative strength. Yeah, and, and you're right. It's it's been a it's been a very shallow shallow retracement. It's been a 38 percent retracement. So last week I bought it again when we dipped to 110. Uh, I picked it up, and the best possible outcome happened on Wednesday when. Um, uh, the RBNZ basically said, "Hey, we're we're open to further cuts, and um, you know we'll be aggressive if we have to." Basically, is what they're saying. And then you have the R, uh, you have uh, Australia had uh, a, a good jobs report. You know, typically, and I, I was telling our traders even this morning, I was telling them typically, if you see a move like this, if it was like, all right. Uh, Australian CPI was higher, and you know New Zealand bin business confidence was lower, and you get this kind of kind of a wacky move higher. I, I wouldn't trust it because it it wasn't. It's just like second tier data. But this week you really had comments that came from the RBNZ, which in my right. opinion was a game changer for the Kiwi. So if if, if we can build on this move. And we can break above this downsloping trend line that basically comes in around uh, 113. You know, it depends on how you draw your trend line, but it's going to be about 113, 112, 50, somewhere around there. If we can break out to the upside, this could be an enormous move. And um, the, you're, you're talking a, uh, a move. Whoops, a move in the the Aussie New Zealand that will take us up to about 122. And it, and and it's not just the Aussie New Zealand that looks good. It's every New Zealand pair. You know, uh, the New Zealand looks weak almost on every cross. So, uh, this is one of those one of those trades that I've been watching very closely for the last several months. I happen to got I happen to get a great entry earlier this week. You know, I bought it at two or a one ten, excuse me, uh, basically one ten. So I've been sitting in this couple hundred pip profit for the last couple of days, and um, you know, like I said, if it, it, because it's central, it, because it was the uh, a central bank activity this week. Yes. I've decided to continue to hold it, and I'm actually looking to add to my position now, especially if we can break higher on an intraday basis. And you can see that, you know, if you talk if you talk about this is the RBNZ, and right. the, uh, you know, we're 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 trying to build for a possible breakout, and I'm yeah, willing to actually add to that position. I'm sorry. What do I know, Blake? But it looks incomplete. Like we could pull back to the bottom line one more time for an entry. You think down here? Kind of like an ABC to complete the flag down there to your bottom line. Oh, oh down here. Out. Yeah, it, I mean it could. It depends, but it, like you, you notice how shallow this 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 possible yeah. flag is. It's just yeah. like the it's just it's, it's it's just like the moves that you see on the daily and the weekly charts. You know, it's very shallow. Yeah. But if we you, break, you have a breakaway gap, you have all kinds of gaps in there. Yeah. Which is unusual. Yeah. And, and and if we if we can actually build on this, I mean, you're, you're talking for a pretty big, um, pretty big move that that puts us above 120. So. Okay, so uh, you, I, I'm just curious. Uh, do you think the Fed's going to tighten so uh, they have a cushion in case China turns out to be even worse than people are already thinking? Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're in the the we're in the window. And I think the Fed knows it, and you know everybody else knows it, and we, we're 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 in that window where we could we could you know slip into a re, you know a, a couple quarter recession, um, you know cyclically it happens around you know seven to nine years out, and uh, we we might be somewhere close to that, especially with uh, uh, you you could see how you know the global economy is starting to slow. I, I think the Fed wouldn't mind having some tools available. To it, you know, if 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 they have to, if they have to backtrack, like, um, like the, uh, like uh, Trichet, like like Trichet, or like, like the Trichet tightened and then had to reverse course, right? Just like Trichet, just like the RBNZ, just like you know, if if the Fed has to do that and they have to take that course of action, at least they have the tools available to do it. And also, you know, if if the Fed raises rates, who's it going to hurt? Is it is it really is is it going to hurt the the broad economy? Uh, you know the, the 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 actual economy. I doubt it. Is it going to is it going to put the asset markets into a crisis or into a recession? Possibly. I mean, you could see you could see a pullback in equities. You could see a a, a pullback in some commodities. But is that really going to affect the broad economy? It shouldn't. 
and um, you know, so what? The Fed is the Fed has produced a from the prior to the financial crisis, and and I and I have to point this out because people tend to forget. Prior to the financial crisis, we were at in the S and P. Okay, if you you know you, you look at it, we were 15, at sixteen. 15. Yeah, yeah, we were at 1,550, 1,600. We're now at 2,200. We 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 surpassed the, those highs by what 50, 60 yeah. percent. And the Fed, you know, I, I think the Fed's view is we've done what we can. And and the Fed, if the if the economy can't sustain, you know, us, you know, normalizing rates somewhat, and whatever normal is, maybe it's one percent versus ZERP. But if the if if the economy can't absorb that, then we're we've got some real issues, some like bigger bigger issues. Um, are, are you going to have a conniption fit in the in the markets? Sure, but are, you're going to really affect the top ten percent of the economy that really holds equities. Yeah. So what? They've been riding high for the last you know s several years. I, I don't think the Fed's really too concerned about 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 the markets at this point. They you know it's not it's if it was the Bernanke Fed it might be some it might have been a different story but this is Janet Yellen's Fed and uh, you know she's a small lady that carries a big stick. Yeah so uh, Shalom Blake you use a Yiddish word conniption fit. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what do you think of the Shemitah? The, <laughs> the Shem <laughs> I, you know, first of all, I, I uh, uh, we're working with uh, some of my my coworkers are are Jewish, and, and it seems like I'm like I'm like, wait, what holiday is it? <laughs> what a what a Meshuggah American, huh? Uh, no, I mean, what a what what is going on? Yeah. But um, but it is uh, isn't this um, uh, it's New Year? Uh, it's a yeah, it's, it, yeah, and it's uh, again the uh, seven year cycle, seven year. Uh, forgiveness of debt. Uh, is supposed to be part of it, so I called all my creditors and let them know Shemitah was a Sunday. Uh, I didn't get a great response from them, so you know uh, I'm not Jewish, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go Shemitah a bunch of creditors. Yeah, I, you know uh, I I think actually uh, debt forgiveness is probably what we're gonna have to do down the line, or default, <laughs> or hyperinflate out of this anyway. So uh, interesting time. Uh, um, I know Armstrong thinks we're going to have a sovereign debt crisis starting in early October. So you know, some great looks today, Blake. Uh, I, you know, I, I shouldn't let it be as long as it has been between interviews, but great to get your views on this. So uh, if you're right about the Swiss, then the parity bears will probably finally be right about Euro. If you yeah. get to that 110 level you're looking at in Swiss, you know, it, it depends, because uh, if you look at the Euro Swiss, the Euro Swiss looks extremely bullish right now, and um, I mean, the Euro Swiss looks like it wants to get all the way back to 120 and fill that gap. So, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't, nece I don't necessarily know. Well, first of all, who knows where everything's going? Um, I do believe the dollar Swiss is going to go higher. I don't know if it's going to be uh, uh, as a result of the. U.S. dollar rip roaring against everything, or if it's going to be more of the Swiss franc falling against everything, because I, I really do believe that if there's no reason to hold the Swiss franc for institutions, institutions don't want to hold it because it is too expensive to hold longer right, it term. Costs them to hold it. Exactly. It so yeah. my 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 big gripe with the Swiss pairs and the reason why I've been long them. Uh, for the last few months or last couple months is because now that Greece is really more on the back burner and not on the front burner and as long as it stays on the back burner and so does Spain and every other you know sovereign issue that we're dealing with then that gives the dollar Swiss that or the Swiss the room to fall against everything now if there's a sovereign debt issue going into the fall or into the spring and that's way above my pay grade I'm not I, I don't think I can there, there could be uh, another, there could be another debt limit fiasco coming here yeah. in October too. There, there, there could be, especially if rates start to go up. I mean, maybe, maybe there will be. So, but a lot of things uh, bubbling on the stove, aren't there? There are, and I get, I think that this is the, this is the type of market where, as currency traders, especially us, not speaking the majority of the people that are listening in right now, we are traders. We have the ability to be nimble. Um, don't um, don't forget that you don't you don't have to be right, and and it's it's and it's okay to be wrong. It's just not okay to stay wrong. So, 
you know, if you're if if you're in a if you have a certain bias about the market, like I'm a dollar bearer. I don't I don't care what anybody says. I'm a dollar bearer. Dollar's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, it's okay to say you know what the dollar's ripping now. Uh, you know, and let's say the Fed raises the rates, the dollar's ripping now. It's going higher. Let's face the facts. You know, and 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 don't st just stay short. Or if you know, if 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 like let's say I'm wrong and the dollar you know really starts to you know get hammered, I'll be the first one to say, hey, you know, it's it's time it's time I need to shift gears. And I need you know don't don't stay wrong. It's okay to be wrong. Okay, I, think, uh, I have one question that. and. Uh... Uh, it was Bean's first time in our room, and uh, first of all, he asked me, I said, why do people call you Bean? He said, ask Blake, and he has a question, what are your thoughts on the end pairs? <laughs> That's a, a, hey, Rick, uh, it, it goes by Dean, but uh, the, the, he's, uh, he's, got a, he's got a couple names going on. Um, as far yeah. as the yen pairs go, I... Um, I think we're more held hostage by the equity markets right now, and as long as that, you know, so as, I, I actually... I'm still short a little bit of pound yen, unfortunately. I've been short that for the last week, and it's not been good to me. But I've uh, been shorting the other yen pairs, making up lost ground. So that's been okay. The uh, the dollar yen, though, I think is really you can look at it. It's and this is more the base currency that I look at to make sure that I'm on the right track with yeah. other currencies. But what you'll notice on this four-hour chart, and I pointed out earlier, we made a higher high and a lower low. When you get a higher high and a lower low, that means that you have really no trend established. That you you might right. even get a broadening uh, range, but that means that we're getting false breakouts to the upside and to the downside. You can see how we made that lower lower low, yeah. higher high. You know, when I see uh, price action like that, it's usually very I I, be, I get very um, cautious, and so I don't have. Yeah, so the right trade there. is no trade right now in the end. Exactly, and unless you see the mar, you, when I say the market, unless you see the S and P or European markets or Asian markets really start to uh, uh, rip one direction or the other, I think the yen pairs are kind of. I think it stunned everybody. It stunned every, you know, all the bulls out there. Anybody who was bullish, all the yen pairs yeah. prior to the markets falling. Anybody who was right. bearish, I think we got stunned on both sides. You know, to so yeah. it almost left the market paralyzed. You know? Yeah, it's like it was in an auto wreck, and it's trying to—it's in shock and trying to. Exactly. Everybody. Everybody's yeah. everybody's looking around at each other, going, I, "I really don't know what to do." And and when you have that type of price action it, where it's consolidating like that, I think the. I your, like your, I like your blue trend line for a sale up there, Blake. That's an area I was looking at uh, for for weeks now. You that, know, uh, trend line you had up there above 122. Yes, sir. If we can, if we can get that, I think that's a great place to be on the short side. But that's 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 eons away. That that would that would also match up with your S and P at uh, above two thousand. Yeah, twenty fifty. Yeah. You know, if we get up yeah. there at twenty fifty, the dollar yen's at one twenty two. I think those are great from a risk reward standpoint. And you know, Dale, we can't control much in the markets. Matter no. of fact, there's very little Nothing. we can control. But what we can control is we can control our risk. And as long as you can manage that appropriately, that's how you come up come up ahead. You know, and that's how you stay in this game years and years on end. So just remember, manage risk and manage it appropriately. That's a pearl to end it on, Blake. Good hunting uh, into next week, Blake. Thanks so much for edifying our community, and uh, I hope the tips rain down on you into the Fed, after the Fed, and into the fall trading season. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Dale. And by the way, if if, if anybody listening here has not seen Dale sing. Oh my God! I was so impressed. I, I I had to actually show my wife, and my wife is like, "That man's handsome." So just oh uh, wow, yeah. yeah let, well, you know, see, you know, I, I you know, I, I tell the story. You know, since my diagnosis over a year ago, ev everywhere I go, I I say, "Well, you know what?" Uh, oh, Joel Osteen tells the story of a uh, someone that goes to the services and said, "Joel, you know, since I was diagnosed with cancer, I, I'm better looking." And Joel said, "Why?" And uh, he said, because everyone who sees me says, you look good. You look good. You look good. So uh, it was great talking to you, Blake. You gave me some thoughts that I'm going to put into my intelligence gathering and some things to confirm what I was looking at and some things for me to reconsider. So um, lots of value every time I talk to you, Blake. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks so much for everything and, that you guys and, uh, do. And why don't you just uh, tell people the best way to follow you. You have your morning show, The Morning Edge, and uh, 
besides Bean, who knows you, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell the community how they could follow you and stay in touch because, uh, in my opinion, you're a great follow. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm uh, Pip Czar uh, at Twitter, and that was a, a given name by one of our traders about Oh, about eight, eight, nine years ago, whenever we issued a car czar, so somebody called me the Pip Czar. Kind of <laughs> stuck ever since then. Uh, and and the Twitter handle happened to be available when I joined Twitter like six, seven years ago. Anyway, um, I do broadcast every morning for the last 13 years. I uh, th we do about 10 and a half hours of uh, broadcast throughout the course of the day. Not my, just me, but we have a team. My Morning Edge uh, has been broadcasting for 13 years. So um, every morning, every trading day, uh, I'm usually there unless I'm you know, I'm sick or on vacation, so uh, uh, I, I look to see you guys there. So thank you so much, Dale, for the invite, and thanks to the FX Street team and everything you okay. guys do for, for us. You're, you're so welcome, Blake. Have a great weekend, buddy. Good you hunting. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Blake. There's